Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we will install AutoGPT locally on a Windows 10 machine. So quickly, what is AutoGPT? AutoGPT is an AI agent that can be given a goal in natural language. It will then break down this goal into subtasks and loop through them until the goal is achieved. It's important to note AutoGPT plugs into OpenAI uh, GPT-4 to function. It's connected to the web, so you can work with the most recent and latest data. But you will, however, need an OpenAI key for the software to function properly. I include a link to the wiki below. And I think without further ado, let's move through the installation of AutoGPT by visiting the GitHub page of Significant Gravitas. This is the official AutoGPT uh, GitHub page for the project. And what we're interested in is heading over down to the install instructions and opening them up. Now, the first thing you'll notice, there's three pieces of software we're going to require for AutoGPT to run. The first is Git for Windows, Python, and then Docker. Um, I'll leave links to the pieces of software below in the description of the video. And we want to head over to Git for Windows, grab the latest version from the website, Python, grab the latest version from the website, unless you're using something like Stable Diffusion, and then uh, grab the latest version of Docker Desktop for Windows. Now that we have Git for Windows, let's go ahead and install that on the machine. And you can finish this installation with most of the defaults. I'll uh, just select a different editor, as I prefer using Notepad++. So let's go ahead and get Git for Windows installed. So next, let's go over to the Python website, uh, go to Downloads, and we want to grab the latest version of Python for Windows. Let's download that and we'll get it installed. So when we install Python, uh, let's get the installer going. I think there's one thing that's important that you need to take note of. And that's to enable this check mark for Python to add it to the path. And then you can go ahead, accept the defaults, and get Python installed on the machine. So before we go ahead and install Docker, we need to ensure that we've got WSL installed on the machine. That is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, if this feature is not enabled, go ahead, open a PowerShell in admin mode and execute WSL install. So next, we need to go ahead and enable the virtual machine platform on the PC. And we can do that by executing the above command and links to the Microsoft article in the description. And lastly, before we install Docker, it's very important to ensure that we're running WSL2. Uh, this can be enabled by running the following command as an admin in PowerShell. We want to be running WSL space dash dash update. I've already ran this on this machine. Uh, yeah, it installed and, and switched on the latest version of WSL. And I confirmed the latest version by rerunning this command. Ensure that you do that and you should be good to go to install Docker. So before we start configuring uh, AutoGPT, let's head over to docker.com and you want to download and install Docker on your desktop. So now that we've got the Docker installer, uh, let's go ahead, get that installed on the machine and we can accept all the defaults.
Now that the PC rebooted, let's go ahead and start up Docker Desktop. Make sure this is started and then we can start configuring and installing AutoGPT. Finally, we're ready to start installing AutoGPT. So I would recommend heading over to the GitHub page and opening the setup instructions. Uh, this would be handy if you want to copy and paste and follow along as we start configuring AutoGPT. So the first thing you want to do is open up a command prompt and then make a working directory for your AutoGPT. Next, head over to the setup instructions, go to the section where it says set it up with git. We want to now clone the AutoGPT latest stable release from the repository to our directory. So grab this command git clone slash b and we just want to execute that in our command prompt we've got open here. So go to your AutoGPT directory, paste that command in and let's clone this uh, from the git repository. So next we're going to need that OpenAI API key we spoke about earlier. So go ahead and head over to platform.openai.com forward slash account forward slash API dash keys. Um, once you're there, you should be on the screen. Go ahead and create a new secret key. Call that auto GPT. Create key. And you want to ensure that you copy this um, because after this you won't be able to see this key again. And I'll remove this key after the video is done. So copy this and let's move ahead to the next step. Now go to the folder you created earlier for your AutoGPT. You'll see that Git created another folder in here called AutoGPT. Let's get in this folder. And we are looking for this .env.template file. And you want to go ahead, select that, and make a copy of this file. Um, we'll be editing this file. So let's go ahead and make a copy of that file. Paste. And that should give us a copy. We want to go to that copy we created. And we want to remove everything after the .env. So let's take that out of the file. Rename it. Change it. And then we can go ahead and edit this file in your favorite editor. Now find this entry in your env file. You're looking for openai underscore api underscore key then let's just remove this, insert your key, save this file and let's exit the editor. Now we're ready to build AutoGPT with Docker. So head over to the setup guide. You can find it at the website over here. Go down to this command. You want to copy this. This is the command we're going to use to build the image. Go head over to your folder where you've created your auto GPT. Paste that in the execute and let it run. And when the build is complete, what you want to see in your command prompt is everything nice and blue and no errors. And also open Docker in the taskbar and you want to see our auto GPT image that's been created in Docker for you. And then we should be ready. The next step will be to launch auto GPT. Now finally, let's head back to the setup guide. 
we are now ready to execute the run command so let's go over here copy this command go back to the command prompt paste it in there and this will launch auto gpt finally So now we have AutoGPT up and running. You'll see it's ready, all in blue, asking you for a prompt. For those who just wanted to get AutoGPT up and running, thank you for watching the video this far. Um, I'm quickly going to proceed and just quickly show you a use case for AutoGPT. Now in this use case, we're going to ask AutoGPT to browse Google for us. Find the first listing that it can see for an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 uh, display card. Then it must save a link to that listing in a text file called myvideocard.txt and uh, only find and save the first result on Google and only save a link to the first listing in this text file. So I'm putting that in. Sometimes AutoGPT gets a bit uh, elaborate. So let's see what happens if we execute this prompt on AutoGPT. Now this is where the power of GPT-4 comes in for AutoGPT to start figuring out what it needs to do and apply some logic and reasoning. So it's defined a role for itself. It knows it's an AI assistant and um, it's going to shop for the first listing that it sees on Google and save the results to a text file. So now it's uh, asking me for input. It wants to pass the command to Google and here's the query that it's going to send. So let's go ahead, pass the command and see what it returns. Now AutoGPT scoured the web and it's actually coming back to me and again yes the intelligence of GPT-4 at the back of this. So it's uh, not only ran the search for the GeForce RTX 4070, it's also ran the search for the RTX 4070 Ti. Um, it's now saying it's ready to save these results as requested in a text file. And here you can see the workspace folder that uh, my video card or TXT file is going to be created in. It's again asking me for permission to continue. We're going to go ahead and say let's wrap up and create the file. AutoGPT has now successfully created the text file and saved the results for us. And again, yeah, the sharpness of AutoGPT comes in. Um, it, it knows it's completed its goal. I've uh, completed the goal of saving the text file. And it's now even asking for a checkup on itself to make sure that it's completed all the tasks correctly. We're going to trust it in this case. Um, it's done its work. It's uh, looked for the results and hopefully it saved it nicely for us in the text file. So let's go ahead, exit here, and then let's see what the output is. Now you want to head over, open your Windows Explorer, open this directory. Um, this is the workspace directory where AutoGPT will be saving anything that it basically creates. And here you can see it's nicely saved our text file for us. If we go ahead and open this up, we can see it's done what it what it what we've asked for. We've got the two links and we've got links to the website to go and visit this. And now that AutoGPT has completed its tasks, uh, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you want to support, like and subscribe, and see you soon when we publish more videos on technology.